Hello musicians, Bucky Dirtle here. Welcome back. I'm doing another tutorial on MuseScore 2. This is an open source uh, music notation application. We are going to be talking today about chord diagrams, or fretboard diagrams for guitar, ukulele, banjo, all kinds of different instruments, any fretted instruments. So don't fret, I'm going to show you how to do this. Now it's re it, there is a few steps to this and it isn't something that would really be obvious so that's the reason why I'm doing this one, because it is kind of complex as a top, as a concept. So, uh, but very, very, very useful and necessary for us all to know. So, um, the very first thing is we in, we have a basic setup here in um, in MuseScore. We need to choose Advanced down here in order to see all of the topics, all the elements we need in the palettes. We need to choose Advanced, and when you do that, you'll see. You have fretboard diagrams right here at the bottom, bottom, and that that will show us a number of fretboard diagrams. Now, right now, uh, there's a default bunch there. We're going to talk more about that another time, because you can uh, you can add more things and change things and stuff. But we'll talk about that later, another time. Um, I'm going to be going over what you can do here uh, to bring in and display properly, because that's a that's a bit of a task. And, uh, and manipulate, edit these fretboard diagrams. Okay, so very first thing, let me blow this up a little. Uh, let me get rid of that guy. Um, let me blow this up a little so we can see it nice and clearly. Okay, I'll scroll down a little. So now um, uh, we'll, use this, uh, we'll use this D right here. Okay, that's what we're going to use. So let me just grab a chord. Uh, I'll just grab any old one because you can, there's many there. Um, and you can see that we have a snap. You see that? It snaps somewhere wherever we want it to be, whatever where the beat is. So I'll just put it right here in the first beat. So there we go. Um, now you might say, okay, um, but that's not the chord I want. Okay, that's that's not the right chord. That's fine. So what we do in order to change this chord to be what we want it to be is you click on it first, so you highlight it. And then we go up to View, and we go to uh, Inspector. Now, we've talked about the Inspector before. Every element in MuseScore can be manipulated using the Inspector. So no matter what it is, time signatures, key signatures, wording, <coughs> excuse me, lyrics, all kinds of things can be uh, manipulated with the Inspector. So we'll click Inspector, and there we go. Our Inspector is open for us right here. Now... I've got this highlighted blue, so when it's blue, this is the inspector. If I if I choose this note, now that's the inspector for that note. So whatever is highlighted at the time, that's what the inspector will be representing. So I'll click on the chord chart, and here it is blue. Now, we can do our vertical and horizontal offsets, which you talked about in other uh, tutorials. You can see I can move the chord, any, the chord diagram anywhere I want. Um, also, scale is here. You can change the scale of it to make it bigger or smaller. Maybe if you have students that need to um, that uh, are, need the chord chart to be large for them to see, uh, that might be good for them. Or somebody who may be visually impaired, maybe that's you may want to make the chord chord chart larger for them, the chord diagram. Um, okay, so that that is the graphical things. Let's look at the properties. See right here, properties. Click that one. Now this is where we can manipulate our chord. Uh, the uh, the fretboard diagram, I should say. This is where we can manipulate the fretboard diagram. So let's say we have uh, we want uh, you have like a seven string instrument, or if you have a five string or a four. Let's say you're doing for banjo, four string banjo or ukulele or mandolin. You can do four strings, you know, or three, you know, or two. So, uh, but we're going to go to six. So this string uh, setting right here. Let's just choose the number of strings. The number of frets, this is how many frets are displayed on the chart. So you may have a reason why you'd need seven frets displayed, maybe. Um, you can, whatever you need. So I'm going to leave it on four right now. Um, and But you can choose what you need. Now, uh, the, the other thing, and this is probably the thing that you're, you're probably going to need to dig into the most, is you can place the fingers wherever you want them to be by just clicking on the uh, the 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 fret uh, the string and the fret number. So if we're doing an A uh, scale, uh, sorry, an A chord, we click like that. We, to delete uh, to delete one, you you click the actual 
one that's there and see that they delete and they give you zeros and now you guitar shifter might say wait a second this e is not supposed to be in the um in the a chord unless you're doing the second inversion but uh, so if you don't want to play um the e e string you just click the zero and it turns into an x which means of course don't play that guy so you don't play that string and if you wanted this one too i could do that you know or i could do this so now there's no opens and if i click it a second time it makes it it just deletes it so there's nothing there so you may want that too i, I don't know maybe you maybe there's a reason why i'd want it to look like this but but you might also want it to look like that and like that whoops sorry like that now this would be a proper full spelling of an a major chord okay or we can go a minor chord so depending on what you want uh you can manipulate that um and of course if you wanted to use a capo on, a, on like say a certain number of frets up oops sorry i didn't mean to do that you can use this slider and it will move it down the fingerboard so instead of being on like you can see the nut right oops sorry about that you can see the nut right here, the dark line. That's that's the nut of the guitar. That is the um, fret zero, I guess you might say. Um, and if I scroll down, now this is actually fret two or fret one. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. Let's make let's make it clear. This is fret one right here. The nut is right here, would be zero. Now if I do this, now we're in fret two, and then fret three, fret four. So it moves on down the scale down the front the fretboard okay so that's that's basically it that's how you manipulate the the fretboard diagram to be exactly what you want and then you click OK and there it is you see it gave it to us exactly as we wanted it so that's it nothing to it now um, um, and you can move it around a little bit too like you have the ability to move it around I showed you how to move it using the horizontal and vertical offset and you can do that but when you move it like this if you move it manually with your mouse, look over here in the horizontal and vertical offset. It changes it for you. You see that? So you can move it around and it will judge where it's supposed to be and give you those numbers. So, and I'll show you a reason why that for that in a minute. But let's just put it back to the default. The default might be in a great spot for you and it might not. Now, here's the reason why. You might want to put an A chord under here. I know for me as a guitarist, I don't need the, the chord chart for an A chord. I just need the A. So I want to see the text. So look here on our um, palette. You have text. Now I can grab my staff text and I can drag it out and I can drop it on the note which is you know on the beat where you want it to be. So there you go staff text. It lays it in. But look where it goes. It goes right in the middle. Horrible. That's no good. So we'll, I'll show you how to fix that in a second. But before I do, let me just double click on that staff text and I can delete it and put in the, the A. Or I can put in A major. You know, I can do that if I want. Oops, M-A-J-O-R. So I can do that if I want it. And if I hit return or enter, it gives me another line of text. You see that? It doesn't actually accept the changes. In order to accept the changes, you have to click somewhere else in the score. And there you go, it accepts the changes. Now if I click it again, double click it, now I can delete that major if I don't want it there. And I can click it, wait, now, yeah, there it is. Now the A is there in the middle of this, this is horrible, so we don't want that. Now we've learned before in other tutorials, in order to move um, an element to another place, we can, uh, in some cases you can grab it and move it like this, in some cases, which you can. Or if you want to, you can be really neat and tidy, and you can go to your um, element, uh, your inspector for the element you've got selected, the A, because it's blue, it's selected blue, and you can use your vertical offset in order to move it to the place maybe where you want it. So, you know, you can move it exactly to the spot where you want it to be. And this is not bad. I mean, it looks like it's a pretty good spot. It's not exactly where you want it to be, but it's okay. This is good enough for now just for this demonstration. You can also fine tune it a little bit if you want like that. And of course we'll save it over here. All right. And there you go. So now the chord chart looks like it's in a great place. The the uh, the fretboard diagram looks like it's in a great place. And the uh, the name of the chords looks like it's in a good place. Now you might say, okay, I want to be able to, um, uh, I want to be able to, um, 
copy this guy and put it over here too. Maybe I want it to be right here too. So what you can do is you you go you click on it and you click copy. Now you can click copy by doing Command C on an Apple or uh, Control C on a on a, uh, a Windows machine or Linux machine. So I'll, I copy it. I select the note where I want it to be, and I, I can paste it. Control V, Command V, or you can right click and uh, and choose paste. So there you go. It copied it right there. And now if I go to my A and I do the same thing, copy and go over here and go paste, it pastes it in. Now it doesn't just paste in the letter, it pastes it in with my inspector details. So everything's there. It's exactly the way I want it to be. That's great stuff. So um, we can copy and paste it as many times as we need to. Good stuff. And um, and then if you have another chord you want to need to do, you can build another chord and by doing the same thing. So there you go. Nothing to it. Piece of cake. So as you can see, using um, the fretboard diagrams is a little complicated. But once you know how to do it, it's not that hard at all. And you can give yourself some shortcuts too. Like I'll show you how to, how to, how to manipulate this and make more, uh, like how to change it so that you can shortcut some things too. But I'll do that in another, um, another tutorial. Um, so there you go. Let's, re let's re review a little bit. Let's, uh, let's review a, a little peck. Uh, first thing, in order to be able to see our fretboard diagrams, we need to choose advanced in our in our palettes right here i need to choose advanced palette not just basic that'll give us our fretboard diagram you can take a chord you can drag it over and drop it on wherever you want whatever beat you want and it will place it on the bar above the staff uh, you can then if you click it you can open up the inspector which we already have open here and you can move it around with your uh, vertical and horizontal offsets you can do that and you can click properties and this allows you to change the chord to whatever it is you want it to be um, and you can put in opens and you can put in like do not play X's where you want it to be click OK and it will apply it to here you can use text to drag in some staff text like we said and associate it with a note you have to bring it onto a note and then you can use your vertical offset again or you can manually drag the text where you want it to be double click it and uh, and uh, delete the text and then put in whatever your chord is. A knee suspended nine plus. I don't know. I'm making this up. I don't know what chord this would be. So, um, so yeah. And then you have your chord. And now you see this. Actually, this long chord is probably a good example. I showed you this. You can drag it over and place it like that. So it's a little bit more neat. You know. Then you can copy the element. Copy it, and you can paste it. And you can also copy this element and paste it as well to re replace those chords somewhere else in the chart if you want to. There you go. Nothing to it. This material is not hard to do, but as you can see, there's a bit of a workflow you need to get into in order to be able to do this uh, without too much frustration. So there you go. Now, if you enjoyed this, be sure to go to the um, makers of MuseScore. Go to the website and check out what they've uh, what they've been doing there and show your support because this is an open source application so you need to show your support for their work also you can go to utopian.io and check out all kinds of tutorials that i've created and other contributors have created about open source software and tools that you can use for your music and for other projects so be sure to check that out too thank you very much and i will see you all next time